Welcome back, everybody, to Lee Pitts Live here at Franklin Park Elementary School. I got a treat for you. We just experienced the a gentleman's welcome, and two gentlemen who came out to be a part of the 2022 gentleman welcome is these two outstanding lacrosse players. We'll get a chance to meet them as well. The Macmillan boys, or the Macmillan young men, or the Macmillan men, but whatever you call them, you call them successful, you call them role models, and you call them unique as lacrosse players who are here on the campus of Franklin Park Elementary School. Let's get their full names right off the bat. Let's start over here with the elder statesman, the oldest brother. Congratulations on your recent graduation. Get your full name. Thank you, sir. It'll be Ian McMillian. And you just finished where? I just graduated from Florida Gulf Coast University. Went there on a? I went there on full scholarship from FSW Collegiate High School. And I graduated my bachelor's in political science. And your scholarship was in lacrosse? No, my scholarship was an academic from um, my high school. And you played lacrosse there? Yes, sir. Wow, oh, yeah. this guy went to school off his academics, man. And now you, uh, let's get your full name. Yep, I am Dylan McMillian. dun 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 ESPN, <laughs> baby. Dylan McMillian, you bigger than your big, bro your, your, your big brother. When did you outgrow him? Uh, probably about this year, probably. Oh, okay. Yeah. How would you feel about him surpassing you? Uh, I can still beat him, so mm -hmm. I can still beat him when it comes down to it, so I don't care too much. Beat him in what? Everything. <laughs> he just like my big brother, man. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Let's let him think that. <laughs> the McMillans. Uh, Dad, of course, is uh, Tracy McMillian, the chief of the city of Fort Myers Fire Department, and your mom, v Valency. F don't, let me mess it up. What's it, how you pronounce uh, Venicia. it? Venicia. Venicia. I'm sorry about that. I'm going to get it right eventually. They just told me to call you P. Okay. <laughs> now, you are. You tell us a little background on you as a lacrosse player. You you just finished high school. Yeah. So, my first two years freshman and sophomore, I went to Florida South Southwestern Collegiate High School too. Okay. So there, I played two years at Riverdale High School, and then my junior and senior year, I transferred to play at Canterbury School. I see. How did you first get into lacrosse? We don't see a lot of people walking around here talking about they play lacrosse. I've been, I've done over 25,000 interviews and never interviewed a lacrosse player. Well, I started playing after my brother got introduced to it, so I started playing a few years after him, and I just started picking up the flow. Like, my parents was like, oh, we'll just sign you up to play too, so I ended up starting playing. Okay, good decision. Yeah. Right, now, were you intimidated by having not been around lacrosse all your life, playing it all your life, or? Uh, you have been exposed to it at an early age? Well, not really. With me, since I've seen my brother play it, I was kind of already used to it. So it wasn't really intimidating for me. You probably have to ask him how he first felt about playing it first. Mm -hmm. But I found it fun. So I started playing defense first, defenseman, which we might go into a little more about the positions later. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up switching to a goalie. Okay. Now, you did, you, did both of you play other sports? Before lacrosse? Yes, sir. I played football, basketball, soccer a little bit when mm -hmm. I was younger. What about you? Just a little bit of soccer. Okay, so you were playing other sports, and then what attracted you to lacrosse? So I kind of got into lacrosse. There was a family friend whose son had been playing it for years, and she knew that I played a lot of different sports. So okay. she came to my dad was like, hey, why don't, you, why don't he come out, try it out, see if he likes it. And I tried it, loved it, and I just continued playing on and became my main sport throughout high school. And I loved that I played it and loved playing it still. So. And then played it at the college level? Yes. Do you, do, do, I mean, just when you putting on that college uniform, going out there playing lacrosse, did it, you know, you're like, man, I'm playing college lacrosse now. Or, 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 or by that time it was uh, second nature to you? Uh, it was pretty much second nature. It was honestly a lot like high school. I definitely enjoyed playing in high school. That was probably the peak of it for me at least because just going out, playing with my teammates, people I see day-to-day -day in classes, and everything was probably a great experience. So I definitely loved high school. College was enjoyable, but also my years with COVID, it wasn't as enjoyable as it could have been. I got you. But it also, you guys are pretty fit. So good cardio benefits and a whole lot of physical fitness benefits. Talk about that. Yeah, so definitely there's a lot of running. You do need to be strong, so you do a lot of push-ups, a lot of cardiovascular endurance. So that definitely helps out stay in shape. There are a little bit some bigger guys out there, but either way, most – Every lacrosse player is pretty athletic in their own right. Okay. The, uh, the, 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 the agility, the skills that you need to play lacrosse, what are some, some key skills that you are hot? If you got these skills, you may end up being a pretty good lacrosse player. Quickness, eye contact, hand-eye coordination, all this stuff. Definitely quickness, change of direction is a big 
part of it. Okay. So if you can quickly juke someone out, change on the run, you, you could definitely be a great lacrosse player. Okay. Strength too. Let's start looking at some equipment and let people, let's start off with that that right there. Both of y'all pick up those uh, those poles. Pick up your poles because they're different looking poles. I want people to see them on TV. Bring it in front of you. Just kind of solely so they can make sure they see that net. Let's kind of um, lower that right. Let's lower this right here. They can see this net. Describe your net, and then we'll describe your net and what's the difference in the two nets. All right, so my six is going to be a lot different than Dylan's because I play defense. So I have the six foot long stick to start off because defenders are going to have six foot stick. And I'll have this traditional head on it, mine. I'm going to lower it just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, 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 good, right. It's going to be much more narrow and smaller than Dylan's because he's a goalie, so his is going to be a little bit bigger. Because I play defense, this is also going to be a slightly wider than traditional offensive stick as I will have a little bit of a wider head shape to block passes, take a ball away, and pick up ground balls. Okay. Let's come over here to yours. You're the goalie, man. You, yeah. you, you got a lot of responsibility. Yeah, so this is my goalie stick. So as you can see, it has a larger head than most sticks, as Ian said earlier. So essentially, it's bigger so I can catch balls with it. So that's essentially the only reason. And then I have a 30-inch a, um, shaft on it. We call it the stick of a shaft. So 30 inch shaft. This is a traditional shaft. So like, let's say an offensive player will have this length shaft. Mm -hmm. What does a uh, lacrosse ball look like? I think I saw one of you. Yep, I ball. actually have one. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so it's about the size of a tennis ball. But this thing is kind of solid, though. It's like rubber all the way through. Talk about this ball and how it moves fast, man. You don't... It could be dangerous. That's why y'all wear the helmet. Everybody doesn't wear a helmet, though, right? Just the goalie? No, everybody wears a helmet. Oh, everybody wears a helmet. I just have a soccer. throat guard on my But soccer, they don't wear a helmet anyway. So, well, huh, huh? I just have a throat guard on me. Okay. This is – you got to know what you're doing, right? Yeah. Okay. Talk uh, – uh, speed. This, this, does this bounce? Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, this bounces. Okay. In lacrosse, can the ball – can the ball hit the ground or have to stay – like from net to net, from yes. stick to stick. So it, that's actually a specific type of shot, a bounce shot. Okay. So you, you, can, you can, boom. Yeah, intentionally, yes. Okay. How many bounces can it take? There's no no limit on no that. No limit. The ball. I'm thinking is, about tennis now. Yeah. So the ball can hit the ground while that you can't touch with your hands. But whenever the ball's on the ground, it's called a ground ball. So what happens with that is, it's kind of us versus them. The ball hits the ground. That's why I like having my six foot stick. Because I'm going to go out, I'm going to try to get it, take away from whoever else is trying to go for it. Mm -hmm. And that's the possession. You want to have the ball because the more times you have it, the more times you score, and that's how you win. Uh, there aren't a lot, well, I don't know about the whole lacrosse world, but I would assume that there are less people playing lacrosse than, saying playing basketball or soccer, some things like that. Uh, is it an expensive sport to play, to get and started in? Talk about that. Yeah, so, yeah, it is pretty expensive. So a lot of this equipment, like you can this pick helmet, that down and get another item. Go this ahead. helmet, my uh, helmets per se, the top of the line, they're about two fifty. Pick, pick your helmet up. You're going right into the helmets. Go ahead. Uh, helmets. Well, with my helmet, I have a throat guard on mine too. So this one is probably about three hundred, probably just for this. Okay. And then I also have my chest protector. I have a goalie chest guard, so mine's a little longer than the traditional one. And this is the smaller one yeah, for for the speed guys like you. Yeah, mm -hmm. traditional, pretty much all attack men, all attack men, midfielders, defenders all wear a smaller one like this compared mm -hmm. to goalies. Okay, but it's 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 probably no more expensive equipment than say a, a bunch of football stuff, you know, helmet, shoulder pads, and all of that. So yeah, people, I, I I was saying that to lead into this. I don't. Are you on a lacrosse scholarship? No, or, I am not. Now, does Florida Gulf Coast offer lacrosse scholarships? Florida Gulf Coast does not, as their team is more so a section sports club team. Okay. There are throughout the state, throughout the country, numerous D2, D3, D1 programs, as well as NAIA programs that all do offer either athletic scholarships or a stacked academic scholarship for you to come play sports. Okay, so this would be a good opportunity. Uh, I, I guess at, at what I want to get at is, for you guys, it's encouraging for people to explore explore this sport. This is a good sport for people to get into, and they could conceivably get an education from it. But if not, they can still experience that whole athletic competition of lacrosse. Speak to that. Yeah. So essentially, of you, let's say 
you want to go to college, you want to play a sport, but let's say you didn't get offered in football or basketball. If you play lacrosse too, you can get a scholarship for that. And since there's not a lot of people playing it, there's a lot more money and opportunities for you to get a scholarship at many different levels. Yeah, that's what I remember about me being a swimmer. That was just like the recruiters were coming because it just, it just wasn't, it certainly wasn't a lot of black swimmers around when I was coming up. So I, I saw there as a way to get an education as well. Uh, go ahead and elaborate on what your brother just said. Yeah, so there's a lot of programs throughout. There's a few in Florida. Definitely want to leave the state. There's so many throughout the country. I have multiple teammates that went play D2, D3 and got scholarships. I know Dylan had actually a couple teammates that got D1 scholarships this past year and a few more throughout his previous years playing as well. Okay. So there's money's out there. the scholarship's out there. If you want it, you go ahead and take it. I was fortunate enough to have my academics where I didn't necessarily need to. But if you want to, it's out there. You just got to put in the work and go for it. Mm -hmm. What type of GPA you had? So I did coming out of high school. Coming out of high school, so I did actually two years of college in high school. So I only had to do two years subsequently graduating high school. I had out of high school, I had over. I think I'm trying to think of my weight, weight or unweighted Dingley. Which one? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you had like the high three, low four. Yeah, I had a high three. My college GPA was about three nine, three eight, or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it was fairly good. And now you're going on to law enforcement. Yes, sir. Man, we're so proud of you, man. How about you? How'd you do in the books? I would think most lacrosse players do well in the books anyway. Yeah. Be surprised. Uh, yeah, I slacked off my senior year. But um, I still had a good uh, um, a good GPA to get into college, though. So. Okay. Let's we'll go leave to it at that. Let's go to some new equipment down there. Look like you got some kind of gloves. What else you got? Bring me up something new. Yep. Let people get a look at that. Now, you, you're playing with gloves on both hands? Yes. yes. Okay. I didn't know that. I have goalie gloves, so my hat, mine has the reinforced thumb protection. All right. Talk about the importance of the gloves and what role they play in all of this. Um, you want to wear gloves because as me, as a defender, I'm doing nothing but hitting you in your hands, hitting you in the stick, your forearm, your elbows, your lower body. That's the job is to take the ball away from you, and by doing that, I'm hitting you. So you want to wear your gloves. What do you mean hitting? Hitting. It's a full lacrosse, a full contact. Yeah, full contact. Sport. So really? I'm going to come, I'm going to cross, I'm going to hit you in the cross, Man. I'm going to check you, slap check you, poke check you, mm. push you. It's physical, so you got to get used to be able to take it. I've had bruises up and down my arms, elbows, ribs, lower body, everywhere. And that goalie, you always get bruises from the shots because the ball can hit you. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 it's a mean yeah, sport. Man, I mean, it's mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, many people may remember or they may not remember that one of the great lacrosse players America ever produced was an African-American, Jim Brown, right? The great football player. He played lacrosse for Syracuse. I saw a documentary on that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you guys kind of looked at some video on Jim Brown or know some history of lacrosse and African-Americans? Yeah, definitely. Lacrosse started as a Native American sport, but then Jim Brown did play when he was up at Syracuse. I remember seeing a documentary once where he went, he played against some of the Iroquois Native Americans who they created the sport. So that's what they're known for. I remember one of them saying he put Jim Brown down. He, Jim Brown was running, he came, hit Jim Brown. And that's Jim Brown, that's a big old <laughs> dude. So I'm like, wow, you could go for it. That's great right there. But yeah, it's definitely a lot more African Americans are playing it. You can just look at any college game, you'll see a few more than you used to. Even professionally, you got people like Miles Jones, Nakai Montgomery, okay. who are great players. Definitely look up. They're awesome guys. So it's definitely a growing sport in the African American community. He said, put them down. So when you're out there moving that ball around, you can tackle somebody in a sense? Not, not like, my, not per se tackle. There's rules to it. So you, if someone's running full towards you, you can essentially boom, boom them. Yeah, boom them. Now, with the cross, I'm getting into this, this, the, 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 the rules. You can have that ball in that stick, and you can just take off running with it, right? You, don't, you can just run. You don't have to pass. You can just run. It's not like you can. Tr it's not traveling or anything. Well, that's how you're gonna end up on the ground. Yeah, you can just run, but the minute you run next to the sideline, I'm gonna come up full speed and hit you. But you can definitely go for it. <laughs> so you want to get rid of the ball. You keep it moving. Well, that's the best thing to do is pass it around. Pass the ball to your midfielders. They'll usually clear it, gets off the side where your offense is. You pass to your attackmen. Work around. Best thing is ball movement because that gets the defense tired. That gets them moving. That's to get guys open. Mm -hmm. There's definitely some teams who have like the one star player who runs up and down the field scoring. It just kind of varies. Like with every sport, different teams have different methods, different techniques. Okay. By by what you guys are saying, when you got started, will you consider getting started late, or what's a good time for people to get started? Their kids, and also do females play lacrosse as well? Go. 
Well, you can just get started at any time. You could be an adult and start playing, find a summer league or a men's league. You could start playing in high school of your school who has, has across. And with women's, there's actually more, more D1 women's colleges than men's. Playing lacrosse, lacrosse teams. Yes. I say, who around here in the Lee County area, do we have some good lacrosse programs? Well, you have Canterbury. So my Canterbury team, we went to the state semifinals two years ago. And then this year we went to the regional semifinals, quarterfinals, semifinals. And then you also have CSN. They went to the regional quarterfinals. So it's a, mostly private schools. Mm -hmm. You also have a few, uh, about like three to four years ago, uh, me and my brother's Riverdale team, we went to the district championship. Outstanding. You guys get to travel a lot, it sounds like, based on what he's saying. You, you have gotten a chance to see a lot of the state of Florida. Did you get to go out of the state as well? Yeah, so for travel, definitely. I know a lot of the tournaments we'll do will be on the East Coast. Dylan has done some uh, national teams where he did tournaments up in Maryland and New York. So it was definitely throughout, mainly up kind of up north Maryland, the D.C. area. But throughout the country, there's some tournaments you go to in East and California, Denver, wherever. Throughout the country, there's so many different tournaments you get into if you really want to. Your parents had to be strong supporters of what you're doing. Shout them out for all the support. Yeah, definitely. I got to give thanks to mom and dad for uh, getting up, taking me to East Coast for tournaments extra early in the morning. <laughs> I know they love that one a lot. Now, I know it's, I see the two of you are there. Is there another child or sibling? Or yeah, yeah. so we actually have two old, older siblings. that have an older sister and older brother. Oh, okay. There's a lot of Macmillions running around here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What do people say when they first hear that last name, Macmillion? I used to joke your dad about it all the time. Like, man, you must got some money, man. <laughs> Millions. <laughs> yeah, that's actually pretty much what they say for yeah. the most part. That's a great last name. Mm -hmm. Hope you got the money not back it up or something like that. But we, we, don't, we do pretty good. So. Yeah. All right, pretty good. You guys are pretty modest, too. By the way. <laughs> now, uh, what are you going to major in at Florida Gulf Coast? Uh, forensic, forensic science. Okay. Uh, got a pretty solid science background already? Yeah. Why you chose that field? Well, right now, because I like forensics, so I want to go more into the forensic field, find out, like, go to crime scenes, stuff like that, figure out how to, like, find evidence and process evidence. You may go into law enforcement as well as CSI kind of thing? Maybe more of the crime lab. Okay. That's CSI. That's all we know. But yeah. That's not really real. They tell me they skip a lot of stuff on TV. Yeah, and CSI is <laughs> greatly exagger exaggerated <laughs> and dramatized. Okay. Uh, well, it's been a pleasure having you both here. Got a chance to see some of the equipment. You guys came out. Did I miss anything important piece of equipment? Uh, the cup. Oh, the cup. <laughs> Where does that go? Mm, that covers all of that. All the, you guys as a defender, you have a cup on too? It's not as, it's not required. You can choose to do it. I personally do it because going for ground balls, you do sometimes get sticks mm -hmm. in uncomfortable areas. Mm -hmm. But it comes down to preference a little bit more so with some of the other players. But as a goalie, you 100% want to wear one. Now, you you got a lot of stuff on because it's dangerous back there, I guess. I mean, it depends. If you want to break it down, I just have a helmet with a throat guard, gloves, and a chest protector and cleats. That's it. Okay. Now, uh, how many people are on each side in, in lacrosse? I've glanced at it on TV. I never counted. It's like... Ten on nine on each on the field at each time. Nine on this side, nine on that side. I think it's ten on each side, ten or eleven. This guy said he thinks. Yeah, it's about ten. You have, <laughs> it depends. Yeah, it you'll have a um, a goalie, three defenders, three attackmen, and three midfielders. Also, three defensive midfielders. Mm -hmm. Can you file out? Can you? Oh, yeah. Like you get so too many file? Yeah. There is a different penalty time limitation. So let's say. Kind of like hockey, how they do time serve penalties. You get a one minute slash, a 30 second technical, where you'll serve that penalty. And then sometimes, once you get up to around five minutes, you can be ejected from a game. Okay. And then also, different leagues, for example, some travel teams and different tournaments like that, they'll have different fighting penalties and different things like that. My team actually we've got ejected from a few tournaments for fighting and different stuff like that. <laughs> so it kind of varies every once in a while, depending on where you're playing and the rules that they have mm -hmm. in that regard. Are, are we seeing crowds like when you guys go to play? Like, I know it's like a unique sport, but you still have that cult following the crowd. This the, the lacrosse people. When I played in high school, I, yeah, mm -hmm. there was a, we had a great, a decent amount of fans at our games. Okay. All right, well, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure to get you both here. Thank you I'm, for having I'm us. Going to be following y'all yeah, career. <laughs> yep. Uh, I'm glad you. Uh, we're proud of you. What you did in, in school and what you're doing now, representing, and uh, just 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 uh, keep on doing the good work. Mm-hmm.
You heard it right here for the first time on Leap Is Live. I got a chance to talk to some lacrosse players in our community. Remember, Miami may have the oranges, but Fort Myers, Lee County, and Southwest Florida has, has the, the juice. juice. <laughs> they got it, has the juice. We'll be right back.